We're going to be covering a complete walkthrough from A to Z using doing Rock Surveyor. That's going from an LAZ file from Rock Desktop all the way to adding ground control points, getting into the correct local projection, aligning the data set, make sure everything looks good, you know, kind of quality control, quality assurance that you can do, and then getting the deliverables of a bare earth model, contours, a surface model, and an accuracy report from those GCPs. But before we jump into that, why don't we talk a little, about, little bit about what is the Rock Cloud and what is it used for? So the Rock Cloud is a complete post-processing solution. It processes LiDAR data, but it also hosts ortho mosaics, and you can have those right there with your LiDAR data. You can do measurements on ortho mosaics, areas, lines, points, all of that. You can do the same measurements on your 3D LiDAR data. You can do stockpile volumetric calculations on your LiDAR data. You can order your deliverables like we'll cover, like the Rock Surveyor. You can also do more advanced deliverables like planometrics or adding brake lines into your uh, surveyor surface model. Uh, you can also do vegetation encroachment for power lines and PLS CAD. And you can expand really into a lot of other deliverables that we don't have listed, but you can always reach out to us and get involved with the Rock Professional Service Group and they will help you process in any project that you have. So there's a lot more things that you can do in the Rock Cloud. Um, it's also a place where you reproject your data into the correct local projection. It's where you add your ground control points. It's where you do your alignment of multiple data sets. You can merge multiple flights from multiple missions or multiple days. Uh, you can do all that alignment quickly and easily. And you can edit your point clouds. You can do real-time classification in the Rock Cloud, which is really cool and fun to do. Um, or delete and trim your data sets as well. Uh, what else can you do? I mean, it's it's, it's a lot. Uh, you can process your SLAM data sets and you can align a SLAM data set to your aerial data set in the Rock Cloud. Uh, that makes it really easy to do. And then there is just a lot of other measurements, tools, classifications, and other deliverables you can access to. It really is an awesome tool set that helps you kind of master your data into a final deliverable. And then you can always uh, share. That's a really important one. So sharing data sets. When you're within your organization or external to your clients. Uh, you can also add more users with Rock Enterprise plan. So if you have many users in an enterprise that need to share uh, data sets or share a budget of uh, processing tokens. Um, it's also a place, yeah, with the processing tokens where you can uh, process more advanced data sets like I mentioned before. And then uh, oh, one more thing so for all you has an R3 Pro, your Rock Cloud business plan comes with free processing. Every month you get up to five data sets. Uh, I believe 20 acres, first 20 acres free on the, on the first five. So that gets you going, you can start using it. So with that being said, why don't we jump in and actually get our hands dirty and start processing a data set from A to Z. I'm gonna walk you through my thought process too. So you're gonna learn a few things about what I'm looking for to make sure this data set is ready to be processed as well. And when it's done processed, what I'm going to be looking at to make sure it's done correctly. I'm going to start walking you through how to take your LiDAR data into the Rock Cloud and start processing it to get those deliverables of the contours, the bare earth model, and the surface model, and the ground control point report. So let's just jump over here. So here is the Rock Cloud. This is the interface you'll be presented with whenever you log in. Here on the left-hand side, we have the navigation menu, uh, your home, kind of where you're at today, right now. You have my projects, those are your projects that you've created. Shared projects, those are some that someone else created and shared with you. The Rock Network, this is where you can see the actual, all the Rock base stations that are up and operational. This is pretty cool, actually. It's been growing quite a bit, but we'll, we'll talk more about this later. And then below that, we have Rock Stars. So if you're a business plan owner, you can create a Rockstars page and create all of your contact information as well as sharing data sets with the community. It's really cool to be able to see what other users are doing. This is actually, it looks like SLAM with a hover map data set. And you can click and see their page here where they're located. They're in Hawaii, which is awesome. Drone Services Hawaii and has their contact information up here. Uh, let's jump in a little bit lower. So we got the marketplace. And again, if you have the Rock R3 Pro and the business plan, you get five jobs processed a month, up to 20 acres each, uh, the Rock Server, which is what we're covering in this video. Uh, but these are all additional processing uh, offerings that you can get through the Rock Cloud. It's like a professional services. 
You can do planimetrics. You can get brake lines added to your surface. You can do a lot of power line classification, PLS CAD, vegetation encroachment, hy hydrographic modeling. Uh, and if you have a SLAM unit, you can process your SLAM data through the rock cloud as well. So this is a little bit more information on all that. And then below that, we have the community, which is a great place to go and reach out to other users. You can see one hour ago, four hours ago, a day ago, a day ago. So a lot of different people having conversations, asking questions, getting feedback. And it's a good place to go check if you have a question as well uh, before you need to ask anyone because the answer is probably already there. Uh, and then we have Learn, and that is a place where we have a lot of articles to learn about. You're inside the learning management system right now if you're watching this video. And then we have updates, and this is just a place where we share some updates with the Rock Cloud. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in and create our first project. But hold on, before we say this, if you're using Rock Desktop and you uploaded your data from the Rock Desktop, it already created a project for you. It already placed your data set in that project. It put the trajectory in there and it selected the uh, uploaded coordinate reference system for you. So that's going to be a jump start into like level three from where we're at right now. But if you haven't, this is how you do it in the Rock Cloud from start. So I'm gonna talk about this, but you might already be three steps ahead and you already have that project down here, like one of these tiles that you see. Um, this is a little sneak peek. This is what we're gonna be making right here. And then we'll have this in a few steps, but let's go step-by-step step in the Rock Cloud in case you didn't do that. So click start your project. And then the first thing you're gonna do is select where your project was at. You can find it precisely right now, or you can wait till later because once your data set gets populated and the trajectory, it'll put that on the map for you. So you'll know exactly where it's at and you can always recenter this view later. But I just know I was, it was somewhere south of Atlanta. So I'm just gonna put it here for now and we'll fix that later. Okay, now this is the project detail. So the name as well as the description. So for the name, I'm gonna call this one, oh, I'm just gonna copy and paste this name in here. R3 Pro with traditional survey points from a traverse. That's what we're doing today. We actually have a traverse, which is a way of getting very accurate ground control points. And that's what the GCPs we're gonna use on our data set later, you'll see in a second. Um, but that's what we'll name it for now for you guys. Uh, and then the description, this is really important guys. So write a good description in here. It's a way of communicating what you did on the flight, how it was flown, and any other information that you want to anyone else that looks at this data set later. Maybe it's an internal team member, or you wanna add some URLs or a hyperlink to a doc or a PDF or something like this. You can put it in here and communicate that with your clients as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and I already have something written up about this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that in there. So this is just some stats I had from the data set and put it in here and some information. It's heavily vegetated site with thick trees and grass. So this is a good data set to show you guys. And go ahead and click continue. Okay, so now we have created a new project and we can see it's nowhere in the right location, but that's okay, we'll see that later. Got the title and then you can see here, I can click edit and change the title if I want to later and change the description, add links, yada yada, bullet points, et cetera, et cetera. So you can always come back and add more. And that's inside this manage project. If I click back, you can see this is the, I'm the user information, the author. We got the description here. This is what you usually see when you come to a project. And then you have the manage project where you can do all of the things we're gonna do next. So next we have define CRS. So right here is where we're gonna define the CRS of the uploaded point cloud. So this is the data, the, the LAZ that you're going to upload. This is the CRS, the coordinate reference system. So like the projection that it's in um, of the uploaded data. So it's not the final projection you wanna be in when you do all of your deliverables. Uh, in the Rock desktop, it will fill this out for you. So again, if you upload through there, it's going to fill it out for you but typically most LIDARs are going to give you your data in some sort of UTM projection, WS84. So I know I'm in near Atlanta, so that is WSAT, WGS84 UTM zone 16 north. That is a meters. So because I had the pen located over here, it automatically recommended to me. That's the first one. Now that's just because that's where I put the location of my project, it will recommend you 
the most used coordinate reference systems in that area. So beautiful, it was already there. Um, let me talk about this. You can actually search for other ones though. So if I click search, you can type in, so if I just typed in UTM, so you can see there's a lot of them, zone 16, and boom, there it is again. WC84, UTM zone 16, 16 north. And then the vertical was an ellipsoidal height. Boom, it's already there. And I click save. Okay, so now I've titled it, I added a description, I defined what the reference system is of the uploaded point cloud. Important, it's of the uploaded point cloud. And next thing I'm going to do is add my project data. Hold on, what you could do, you can actually go ahead and select your final destination of the projection now. So that way when the data gets uploaded, it gets uploaded and starts reprojecting right away. It's just a little, that's why the order is one, two, three, four, and not, you know, add the data and then do these things, because then it would sequentially do all this reprojection. So let's actually, let's go ahead and, and reproject it now and talk a little bit about reprojections. So I'm gonna click on reproject. Okay, so this is this is a really important concept for you to understand, and this is probably the most difficult thing to understand for the whole part of you doing LiDAR data capture. And uh, I'm probably not gonna do the best job here. There's a lot more resources. We'll put some links uh, below on that. So reprojecting your data. Essentially what's going on here is you're getting data from the LiDAR system on the drone. And the drone's flying with the GPS. And that GPS is in a, it uses a reference system in order to you know, have your latitude and longitude values that you see. And that is coming out of your GPS. And that's and GPS itself is in a Earth-centered, Earth-fixed coordinate system. So end of the day though, latitude and longitude or an ECEF number means nothing to you because you can't do measurements on it. Because like at the end of the day, what we want to have this mapping data tell us is I want to come outside with a tape measure. I don't have a tape measure. I, I have calipers right here. But if I had a tape measure, I'd pull that out. But I want to be able to actually go out. I want to be able to go out and do a measurement, you know, in the real world and then be able to do that measurement in my data. And so I need to project my data into that collect correct local projection. And the other reason is like, yes, you can have a global projection, but the globe is a, is a spheroid, you know, it's not a flat plane. And typically when you pull a tape measure out, it's gonna be, or a ruler, it's gonna be flat. So we wanna be able to do a flat measurement on a spherical object, then you can't do that. Well, you can, but it's not accurate whenever you start to come to really long measurements and you start getting an arc in, inside your ruler, right? If it gets really long. So what we do is we reproject our data set into a basically a, a projection, a plane. And it's literally like taking uh, the round spheroid and projecting it onto a piece of paper above you. So the piece of the sphere that touches the paper right here, you know, is gonna be the most accurate onto that, that piece of paper. But then as you start going around the curvature of the earth and you keep projecting up on that flat plane, that paper, those measurements are gonna get squished and squished and squished and more inaccurate. So you can kind of see that there'd be a taper off and then everything gets projected up. The point being, there's a lot of projections. And the reason there's a lot is because you need to have a local region at which basically that sphere or spheroid is projected flat and accurately onto the plane. So obviously if you have a piece of paper on top of North America, well, if you're in Australia trying to project those points up to that piece of paper, well, those measurements will be all wrong. So you have another flat piece of paper that's over there, and that's your local flat plane planar projection over there that you're gonna project onto. So that's kind of the whole concept here. That's why there's so many of them. It's like a little flat piece of paper stuck all over the surface of this spheroid of the Earth, and each one is touching, you know, at the center point, touching the surface of that spheroid somewhere, and that's where it's gonna be most accurate on your measurements. But then the further away you get, the more inaccurate. So then you have a new piece of paper, a new projection to use. That's a really long explanation, guys. But I, I just want to try conveying it to you in more of an intuitive way. Uh, and then you can get into more esoteric things. So some people just actually def define 000 or 500, 500, 500, whatever they want to call it, on their project and just say, this 
is the center of my projection. Everything will be based off of this. You can do that as well on the Rock Cloud. But today, that's kind of my lecture on projections. The best way of doing it is just looking up what is, you know, talking to a local surveyor. They should just tell you what projection to use. And the way these are all communicated is through an EPSG code. Um, it's an oil and gas standard, that, but now everyone uses it. It's great. So uh, I know here. So again, I'm going to be in feet. I'm in the United States of America. We're using feet. And I know that we're going to be in NAT 83 2011. That's what we always are going to be using. So in the U.S., it's always going to be a NAT 83 2011 today. You know, mark my words. In the future, it's going to change. Um, and then for here, I believe I am in Georgia West. But let me double check. Yes. I am in double, I'm in Georgia West, so I'll select that one. But you can see right here, it's an EPSG code 6447. So 6447 is NAT 83 2011 Georgia West in US survey feet. Great. And then my vertical datum is going to be NAV D88 using the Geoid 18, also in US survey feet. This one, 6360. So the vertical datum is different than the horizontal datum. Again, like the paper analogy I was telling you, the vertical datums are also different as well because we're talking about at the end of the day, you also want to be able to measure flat on a piece of paper, but we also want to be able to measure if I were to go and take a bubble level in the real world. If I have a bubble level in the real world, I know two things. If this is if the bubble level is flat, that means this height and this height should be the same. And that's what we want to be mimicking here. But whenever we're talking about a sphere, you know, I can be above mean sea level, MSL. I can be, you know, three feet high over here, but then come way over here on this side of the sphere and be three feet high. But actually, if I took a bubble level, it would go like this direction. You know, it would be it would be tangential to the sphere's surface at that location. And so it wouldn't arc over to that thing. So that is, this is another reason we're talking about a gravitational equivalence. And what we want to do is at the end of the day, I just come back to, I can explain it in detail, but the most important thing is the vertical datum is going to be giving you measurements that a bubble level would give you in real life. I think that's, that's kind of a good way of thinking about it because it's gravitational e equivalence. And because of that, the bubble level, a bubble level was always stay flat perpendicular to, to gravity. And so you're basically making a, a perpendicular gravitational map. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm getting a little too detailed on that. I'll make another video about that. But here in North America, we have a North American vertical datum, 1988. That's the one you're going to use. Long story short, uh, <laughs> Geoid 18. Uh, there's a lot of other ones. If you're in, you know, obviously uh, uh, Australia, we have the Australian vertical datums in here. And we have, we have all the vertical datums. And if you don't see yours, reach out to that chat bubble and we'll add it. So we're gonna click save. Okay, so now we just reprojected, we added the reprojection. So we have the uploaded projection, the destination projection, and next it's gonna be time to upload our data in order to go through that projection and reprojection and then show on the rock cloud. Let's do that next. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add that project data. So I'm gonna click add project data. And I'm going to go ahead and add two pieces of data here. So if you give me one second, I'm gonna get that data set up. And so I have the LAZ, so you can see right here, I'm gonna drag and drop that. And then I also am going to add the rockppk.txt. And this is the trajectory that was made. Again, if you uploaded it through the Rock Desktop, these will both already be up there, so you're not going to need to add this. Um, you can ask, also add uh, ortho mosaics here, and you can add photos. Um, so all the photos, you can drag and drop them all into here as well. Or if you have any other inspection photos that have uh, the geotags and the exif data, they'll all pop up on the map, and you'll be able to click them and see inspection data as well. It's pretty cool. I like doing that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let that upload, and when it gets finished uploading, we will be next uploading ground control points to our project. And there we go, they finished uploading. So I'm next I'm gonna do is click save.
Okay, while that is now being visualized, you can see down here, visualizing files, processing trajectory files, visualizer update queued. This is a good time to talk to you a little bit about what this status bar menu is down here. This is gonna tell you everything about what's going on with your data set, giving you a history as well. And you can always click this button at any time down here at the bottom, and it will expand all of the actions you've taken on your data set. So in the future, we're gonna talk about moving and aligning, and so, any of those actions that you take with your data set will be recorded. You can always come and look down there to see any of the past things you've done to the data set. It's a good thing to know it's there. You can always see it. Okay, so while that is processing the visualizer, let's go ahead and add ground control, point, ground control points. Ugh. Okay, so to do this, we can do it two different ways. We can either manually type in points one by one or upload a CSV. And so if I click upload CSV, it's going to give us some instructions and tell us kind of exactly what it wants. Uh, it says the CSV requires a header with the following fields, title X, Y, Z, or point easting, northing Z, or name, latitude, longitude, elevation. Uh, and it gives you a bunch of other optional descriptions that you can use. But for this one, I always kind of like to do title X, Y, Z. And let's go ahead and just jump into uh, the GCPs that a surveyor provided to us for this job site. And then we can talk about how to get that CSV and then how to upload it. So let's do that. So here I have a Google uh, sheet and this has all the points. So we this is what the surveyor gave us. Name, northing, easting, elevation, and description. Uh, like that last menu said, it said call it Title. Actually, I think it did say we can do northing and easting. Let's just double check. What did it say? It said point easting northing Z. Okay, well. Let's just do X, Y, Z. And honestly, I'm, I've already duplicated this, so it's safe. I'm going to go ahead and, well, actually, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to copy all these and just create a new page and paste it just so I can save it and come back to the original page. I'm going to delete this. So now I can come here to file. I can go to download and I can download it as a CSV. Boom, you can see Traverse Points just downloaded. I'm gonna come back here. I'm actually just gonna grab this, drag and drop over the Choose File button. And there we go, it all populated. So you can see the title, X, Y, and Z, and the description. Oh, we can have the description. Well, well, let's, let's try that again. Let's just come back to this sheet and just download it like that. File, download. CSV, see the new one downloaded, come back here, let's upload CSV, do the second one. Oh, cool. So yeah, you can have a description, that's awesome. Uh, now what we can do is you can select them at the checkpoint or not. Uh, for all of these, they are, are, I think they will all be checkpoints except for one, but we'll look later. And then we want to set the GCP projection. So this is the projection that the GCPs are in. So all of these are in our final projection that we already set our reprojection into, which was the NAD 83 2011 Georgia West Feet Surveyor. I think it was this one. Yep, right here, NAD 83 2011 Georgia West Feet US. And click Save. Now I'm gonna zoom out here. And we can see there's our project. And we don't see any GCPs on here. Uh-oh, what's going on? I know exactly what's going on. I did this on purpose and I hope you saw me do it. Look, these points are way over here, guys. So this is a common thing that happens. If your trajectory and your LiDAR data is right where you are supposed to be, but your points, your GCPs are way somewhere else, well, you put your X and Y backwards. That's what happened. So watch this, let's go back to manage GCPs. Let's go to upload a CSV, come back to our points, and let's 
take our X and reverse it by, because if you saw before, and come back here, it said point easting northing, and then our original data, that control Z all this, go back. It was in northing easting, not in easting northing, so it was reversed. So let's go ahead and copy that. Just gonna paste it over here for a second. Copy that, paste it over there. Copy that and paste it over here and delete that. So now I just reversed those two and let's see, I think it should be fine if we do it like this. Let's see if it likes us. Download the CSV, third time. And we will go ahead and put that on that choose file. All looks good, same projection, looks good. Click save, that'll refresh. Now let's zoom out and we can see our trajectory and all of our points align perfectly. So there you go, now we've uploaded and we can verify our GCPs in the right location. We screwed it up the first time and then we saw, oh, this is why we screwed it up. We fixed those two columns and boom, they're right in line where exactly where they should be. Um, and kind of in the back end, what's going on is that if you put it in the wrong projection as well, that also will screw up where it shows up on the map. Because we, the rock cloud, reprojects the data into this web mercator projection, which is what the projection of this satellite imagery is in from Google Maps. Um, so this is actually a projection. So if you did it wrong, it would also show up wrong. So there's kind of two reasons. It could have been the columns reversed or the projection that you said that those points are in is incorrect. Those are two sources of error that you can run into when uploading those GCPs. Um, but this looks good. Uh, one last thing I'm gonna do, since now we have that, I'm gonna grab this blue pen and drag it and kind of see how it just clicks right into there. I'm gonna place it right there. I'm gonna zoom in on this. I like to put it right in the middle. And I'm going to click save. So now, when I come back to this screen, it will be populating right here. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and wait for it to reprojection, reproject. And the next thing we'll do is start looking at the LiDAR data set. And I'm gonna walk you through what I'm looking at in the LiDAR data to make sure everything looks good and aligned into the to those GCPs. And then we'll go ahead and order the deliverables for the data set. Now with the data finished reprojecting, our GCPs added, we can see that they're in the correct location, the trajectory. Now we can go ahead and click refresh and visualize the 3D data here on the Rock Cloud. So click refresh, click 3D. And there we go. So this is our first look at the LiDAR data here in the Rock Cloud. We can see the trajectory in white, the LiDAR data in the rainbow elevation color and all the GCPs are in relatively the right location. We will go through how to align the GCPs to the data set, but before we go into that, let's go ahead and go over the interface and everything you see, so that way you're more familiarized with uh, the Rock Cloud interface and you can navigate with proficiency here. So starting on the left-hand side, this is the same left-hand bar that's here on your 2D view and on the 3D view. You can see the description there first. We have the manage project. This is where we can come in and update our reprojections if we want to, add more GCPs, add more deliverables, or add metadata, or add a deliver order deliverable, sorry. And then we have deliverables. And this is where you'll find all of the download files. If you were to order something from the Rock Cloud, they'd all be right here. You can download all the deliverables there, as well as the raw project data. We have a little info here. We have the total acreage, it's 39 acres, this, this job here. We have the defined CRS, which we did already, and the reprojection, which we've shown how to do this already, and the user information, myself, my email, and how many tokens I have. Here at the bottom, we have process. This takes us to where we can order deliverables. We'll get more into that later. We have export. We can actually export point clouds, so just get export only the ground class or export only the ground that is uh, decimated, so a, a thinned out ground. Uh, but also this is where you can export other things like DXF, DWG, depending on deliverables you've ordered, you'll be able to get different formats of those files here by exporting. 
and we have the awesome share button. So this is where really cool feature. You can share a project with anyone uh, and you can share those deliverables. You can also turn on the link sharing. So either type in their email address and share it that way, or you can just make a, a link, copy the link and send it over to someone. But then anyone with the link uh, will be able to see the data set, just so you know, FYI, as it says anyone with link. Uh, and you can also toggle on and off share raw project data and deliverables. So awesome feature. We have the help, you can get more help there. Obviously here on the right hand side, you always have the chat bubble. You can get help right there as well. So here in the center part of the screen is where you actually see all of your data sets. In the top part of the center, we can go back and forth from the 2D view to the 3D view. And here is the really important toolbar that you're going to do a lot of your actions in. So let's take a second. This is gonna be a big part of the video, the toolbar, understanding that. Okay, let's get into it. So the first thing first, we got the edit point clouds. This one's really cool. And actually, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead to another tool and turn this into the classification view and come back to that. Because we can see this is all an unclassified point cloud. Now you can actually do manual classification here in the rock cloud in real time. So I'm gonna go ahead and say from all to, uh, what are we gonna call this? High vegetation. And so now we have this box that we can click anywhere. So if I select that area and what I can do is I can zoom in here. Let's see. Let's just grab these trees. I'm just going to show you guys this so you can see really fast. So you can move this box around. You can expand it. Let's just say all of these are trees and this is all high vegetation. So I'm going to go ahead and select that area. You can also rotate it using these buttons right here. So you can see, yeah, rotate this way. And you can add more boxes, dude, as many as you want. But let's take a look at what actually happened here. So if I click, come back here to the classification, click off that, look at that. Boom, classified, just that fast. It's, it's done as fast as you move the box there. I can turn that on and off. And that's a really good way, actually, if you're doing slam data and you wanna cut through the building roof, you can classify it and then come back over here and just turn it on and off. And you'll be able to see like an X-ray, you know, down through the center of this data set. So you can do this for as many classes as you want. Um, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep adding boxes. And then you can add as many classes as you like or as, as supported, it's a lot though. And so that's a really cool feature. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove that though because I don't want to classify that as high vegetation right now. But you can see, you can really quickly go in here and classify data. It's pretty fast. I mean, it's real time. So as fast as real time is. Uh, let's go to the next. Uh, we have the stockpile uh, tool. And for this, I think I might just show another data set. This will we'll go, we'll add one really fast. So we have this barn roof here. Uh, sure. Let's go ahead and calculate that and see what it does for the old roof here. Okay, added some tree points in there. Yeah, got some tree points in there. Go ahead and shrink this in. And this is why, so you see what I'm showing you here. Oh, it's already off now. because it's looking at all the points and making the surface. So I calculate again. I think it's gonna grab some of these points too, which it did. But you can see this is the, the volume of that object. You can see really clearly this is the profile of the barn. Now what I could do, so let's talk about classification. Um, I could classify this and then limit to classification and say only building, you know, if I classified that as building, and then it would only use the building points to make that surface. It's a really fast, easy way to, to clean up and only calculate the volume of the thing that you really wanna see. Uh, so that's awesome. You can see all of the values it gives you here, 2D area, cut, fill, the difference. So awesome tool. We'll show more on that later. Let's go ahead and remove that though. And then the next one we have is the measurements panel. And so you can see all your GCPs are in here. You can click on any one and it'll zoom you right to it. 
So if you need to quickly navigate somewhere, you can quickly navigate right here. And this is really cool. So you can get, get directions on Google Maps to this spot. So if I wanted to do that, I can click get directions and boom, there we are. You can get directions right to that GCP. That's pretty sweet, right? Um, or copy or share or see it on the map view as well. So you can open it up in map view. It'll show you right there. And then the other things that you can do here is we can do a single, <clears throat> excuse me, an add a point, single point measurement. So that's a single point measurement there and get those, the value there. You can also navigate to that, add a description. We can do the measured distance. And so drawing lines, minis, keep clicking, right click to exit that. It's 254 feet, that line. Um, this is the measure height. So this will just click two points and we can measure height. So you can see right there, the height is about 10.4 feet. Well, from the ground right here. Let's go from here, right next to it. 9.5 feet is how tall that box truck is. And next one is the profile. So we can create another profile. Click, click, and then you can adjust the width. Let's just say one foot, show 2D profile. And there we can see the profile, 2D profile of that box truck as well. And then we have the measure area. So this is draw four, make a box. So that's 913 square feet. All right, so that is the measurements panel. Let me go ahead and delete all of those now. Remove. 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 Awesome. Next, we have the navigate menu. This is where you can choose how you want to control and move around. Usually I just leave this the same. Uh, really the only tool I use over here is the reset view. So let's just say I get really far away. I can't see my data set. Oh gosh, how do I get back? I come over here, navigate. I click on reset view. Boom. Brings me right back to the center. So you can always get back to where you started if you use reset view. Uh, we could create animation. You can create fly throughs uh, on here. And then the other big thing I do all the time for GCPs, and we'll cover this in a minute, is you can move the data set in real time in X, Y, and Z. So it's really cool. The 3D movement of the data set in real time is so awesome. Uh, I don't think there's any other software that actually does this in real time. So you can actually make feedback into how you make these adjustments. Then we annotate, you can leave messages at a title. So, hello. And description. Look here. So you can add those as many as you want. I'm gonna remove that though. And then we have the layers. Now this is where I spend a lot of time in layers and then moving data sets and sometimes doing measurements, but layers is constant. You're always gonna be here. So you got right here, we have the point cloud. We have the features. You can see the, the actual trajectories there, any measurements, turn those all on and off and the point cloud on and off. The drop down menu right here is where we can change the material, which is, I'm constantly doing this. So there we go, we're back on that RGB. I'm gonna turn off these, the trajectory as well. So you got that RGB looking great. And then if you have any classifications right here is where you can toggle those on and off. And if you have contours uh, or you wanna see the surface model when you order Rock Surveyor, this is where you can turn those on and off as well. Uh, we have the quick tools menu and then we'll use this one very shortly, auto align which is a uh, quick way to align to a GCP. We've got this water level tool, kind of simulate some flooding going on here. Looking nice. Come back, I'm gonna turn this back into RGB view. Change view, point size, make them bigger, make them smaller. I do this all the time as well. This is the performance. I throw it on full quality. This is, my computer has enough RAM, so full quality will download more points to your local machine and give you a better view. So if you're ever gonna do a screen recording, like I'm doing right now for this video, always put it on quality, because that will load as many points and give you the full data set to show to the user. Uh, background color, surface light. So once you have a surface model on, you can move the azimuth and elevation and create uh, relief in that surface model. We'll show you later. Uh, Dev tools not for you. You guys don't see that, I see it. Uh, and then share view. So this one's actually really nice for debugging. So say I have a problem trying to see, you know, right here, I can actually 
move the screen here and just click share view. And now it's copied to my clipboard. If someone else opens this that has ownership or shared this project, it will open right here. They'll see exactly what I'm seeing on the screen right now. And then of course we have the save button. So any movements or changes or classifications, or stockpile, annotations, anything that you do with this whole menu that I just went through, if you click save, it'll save it to the project and it'll be there next time when you open the project. If you don't and you close your browser, open it again, all that stuff's gone. So click save whenever you do something is important. Okay, so that was the whole interface there. So now we're gonna actually dive into and in going through just the QCQA and looking at the data set. And I'm gonna walk you through step by step what I look at in a data set to make sure it looks good before I start processing data. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna go through and QCQA the data set and align it to the GCPs prior to ordering a deliverable. So let's just jump into that and go over what I'm gonna look at when I'm looking at a lighter data set to make sure everything looks good before we move forward in processing the data. All right. Okay, so here I have the data set opened up again. And what I'm looking at is first, I'm going to just aesthetically make sure everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to elevation view. Let's see, I have this all all messed up there but that is looking good you can move the elevation up and down to get a better view i'm just making sure the data set's complete first so yep looks like i have all the data i need i didn't get any when i made did my pre-processing rock desktop i didn't get the corners or i didn't get any of the takeoff and landing portions of the data set that looks good and this is it's generally complete there's not missing data no, no big gaps so that is step one of what I'm going to be looking at. The next thing I will do, is I'm gonna come over here and go to this GPS time. And we can see how many passes we did here, the SWATs, and I'm just looking at alignment. So let's find something to look at. So here is, you can see there's two different colors, that's from a pass down and back. So I just wanna make sure the LiDAR data looks good and aligned. I can really just look at these wires and see that, hey, that's one wire and that's multiple swaths coming in and the wires look all the same from those multiple swaths. But you can also look at a building rooftop, you know, let's let that load for a second. Okay, let's go on that. And we can kind of look, you, know, you see the yellow and the orange, oh, sorry. But we can see the yellow and the orange is basically they're right on top of each other. So this is my quick, I'm not seeing doubling. There's not two of anything. There's not a, a big jump in the data set anywhere. You know, I'm just looking at all of that. Um, you can go through and actually slide through GPS time if you need to see if there's anything misaligned. But I mean, generally I'm just looking for alignment right now. Everything looks pretty good and aligned. So now that I've verified the data set's complete, it's all there. I looked at the LiDAR points and it looks aligned and nothing's like doubling. You can do GPS time. Let's talk about alignment one more second. You can also do this intensity. And so if I had some paint striping somewhere, you would see some misalignment on the paint striping, but I don't, this looks good. All the paint is striped as it should. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is look at the RGB and make sure this looks all good. So we can come over to one of these aerial targets. So this is an aerial target that we put down. Again, we'll align this GCP to the target here in a second, but I'm just still looking at the general quality of the data. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go over to the intensity gradient and that's spot on. So the RGB, Intensity gradient, this looks good to me, I'm happy. You don't always have to do this. A lot of customers don't care about the RGB at all. I do, I think it looks really cool. So I want it to be aligned. And you can see right there, that's pretty spot on. Um, other than that, in this particular data set, we're looking at dense vegetation. And I know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make a contour of, you know, trying to get a bare earth model underneath all this dense vegetation of the bare earth. So a general thing I can just do is flip the data upside down. 
and just see did I get enough points on the bare earth ground? And you can see this looks like almost like a, a smooth sheet of points on the ground, right? You see a few, you know, obviously there's tree trunks. You know, yeah, I can see through those. That's probably what's going on right here. But this is looking, that looks perfect. This is water, doesn't need to be any there. Obviously there's not gonna be any points on the ground underneath the roof of a house. Uh, so there's none there. <laughs> but everything else is generally, it looks good, so. And you can kind of come over here and also just look at, just look at the fuzz. Is it like super fuzzy or not? That's flat as a pancake. So it looks like it's going to be really good data. It looks very clean. It looks aligned. The RGB looks well, you know, aligned with the intensity view. We have a good penetration down to the bare earth. So everything is checking the boxes for me right now. Okay, 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 this looks good, this looks good. So now once I have kind of gone through that and said, Okay, I think the data set looks good. Um, now let's go ahead and align it and, and verify the alignment. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm gonna do is switch over to the intensity gradient view and find these aerial targets that I we placed out there. So we have this GCP, which was on the, the aerial target. This is number 12 and here's the target. So what I can actually do is click on this quick tools and click on the auto align tool. Now I'm gonna say select point, custom point, and I'm going to select the center of that aerial target right there. And I'm going to say, let's move this number 12 to there and click align. Boom, that just aligned. Did I select the wrong one? Oh no, that was already there. <laughs> okay, there you go. There you can see that GCP is right in the center of that aerial target. Now, it wasn't perfect. I didn't pick the exact right point. So I'm gonna come up here to navigate and you can see the numbers that it moved by. You can actually scroll with your mouse and fine tune this placement. So there we go, fine tune that and you can fine tune up and down. Now there's another aerial target over here that I know of. So I can just check my logic here. So there's the other arrow target. It's also right in the middle. Let's see if I can make that pop out a little bit more. But you can, you can see the arrow target right there. So I aligned it to the other one. This other one pops in place. And then we can also just look at some of these points, make sure they all look like they're aligned in the Z up and down. So here's some, some points over here. So I think that's one right there. And I mean, it looks like, gosh, maybe a half a centimeter. So I mean, that's, that's basically spot on. But if you need to make any adjustments, this is a, a point that's in the middle of the woods. And you can see that's right there at the bottom of those point clouds. This was, a, again, a traverse. Or I didn't, didn't really mention this is a traverse. It was done with a prism pole and a total station. Um, so that's how they got these points really accurately down inside of the trees. You see, I mean, that one is right there perfectly on the surface of the ground, even underneath all those trees and that vegetation there. So that's what I would do. And then once I've aligned all that, I'm gonna go ahead and click save. So now I just went through and visually inspected the data set. I made sure that the lighter data was aligned nicely. I made sure the RGB looked good. I made sure that the there wasn't data wasn't like crazy fuzzy, something went wrong. I made sure it was complete, so it was all everything was there. Um, and then I went ahead and aligned the data set to the GCP and I use the save button and I click save. That makes sense? So once you've done all that stuff, now I feel comfortable with the data set. The GCPs are aligned. I've looked at my other ones. Next step is going to be ordering a deliverable rock surveyor. And now we're gonna go through getting that bare earth surface model and the contours and the ground classified point cloud as well as an accuracy report generated. And then after that, we'll talk about how to optimize the data after that's been generated using the accuracy report. And then you'll be good to go and off to the races. 
Okay, so like I said, we did all the alignment in the last video. Here I have the data set uh, up on the screen. Uh, everything looks good and the data's aligned. It's in the right projection. We're, we're feeling good. We're, we're doing good right now. So we're gonna go ahead and click process. And then right here we have Rock Surveyor, we can click order. And here on Rock Survey we have this order checkout cart area. We can select the contour interval. So this, we want one foot contours. Um, we can do enhanced classification where you have ground, building, and high vegetation classi classified. And uh, now with building footprint contours, so it's going to draw the footprints of the building and not do contours through that. Uh, we can also do enhanced classification, which is ground, building, vegetation, road, water, bridges, and transmission classification, as well as those footprints. Or we can do the ground only. We can also add brake lines to this project. So if you need to have brake lines added to your surface, that's gonna be generated from the rock cloud. You can just click this add on and it will do brake lines. Uh, you know, sometimes you need, to, well, you need to do this whenever you have abrupt changes in elevation. So if you have a retaining wall, um, oftentimes you're gonna do it at the edges of creeks and uh, rivers and embankments, uh, parking lots, any of these kind of features that have this abrupt changes in elevation uh, or it goes to nothing needs a brake line. So it's very common that you're gonna use brake lines and need them. You can just click the button, add them on here. Uh, we have the delivery time. Uh, so if you don't need expedited, one to two days, standard three to four. Honestly, it's pretty much done processing within a couple hours. So it's pretty fast. And you can see here, 38 acres at one token per acre. Uh, it's 10 tokens for that. For ground only, it's four tokens. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to click I agree and click order. And there we go. Now we can see here on the deliverables page, we have an order deliverables pending. And you can see it's processing now. It's doing the AI classification. You'll be able to see the classification from the AI pretty quickly here. Um, and then our QC QA team will go through it and correct any problems I see with that data set. Now, if you have any problems that you see with it once it's done, make sure you reach out into the chat bubble here and just say, hey, I see some problem. One of our support staff will be able to actually be with you on your data set right here and see what you're seeing and we're gonna be able to resolve that problem. So just make sure, don't be shy, feel free. That's why it's there. That's why we provide the, the service. We want you to have the perfect data set every time, not just sometimes, every time. So that's really what you're getting. Um, okay, so now we're just gonna let that process and we're gonna come back on the next video and go over the uh, outputs and the deliverables. So here we go, we got the project open, the rock surveyors finished uh, processing. Now let's look at what we have uh, delivered, done. So here on the right hand side, I've opened up the layers menu and let's go ahead and just really quickly show ground only. So there you go, that's the classified, let me turn off the trajectory. That's the classified ground only. We can actually turn on the contours for this bare earth model looking great you can change the contour roughness to balance smooth or rough and so basically what this is is like how close are the contours actually hugging the surface model that's generated the contours are generated from the surface model i'll show you the surface model so that's the surface model when you turn it on and so this bare earth surface model is generated from the bare earth classified points that I showed you and from the surface model generates the contours. Um, the contours, some people really like smooth contours like this. So you can see that's like a more smooth uh, cartographic, some people call them contours. And then balance is somewhere in the middle and then rough, it just really hugs that surface everywhere. But you can see how jagged they get. And so sometimes people don't want these rough contours. They want the smooth ones, but sometimes people really want the rough ones. So you get all three every time. Um, so that's deliverables. And then the thing that we really wanna see over here, so we come into deliverables, you can see a rock surveyor was ordered and we have this accuracy report. So let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, so we aligned the data set and we classified the ground, rock surveyor did, and it generated the surface model. Now we have the vertical RMS accuracy is 0.09 feet. Looking great. Considering this is a very vegetated area, 
this is very impressive. So let me come back to the data set and tell you why I think this is particularly impressive. I'm, I'm, I have looked at this before I recorded the video, but I think it's awesome because this data set is all with a, a traverse. So basically we have a total station and we have a prism pole going into the woods. And so with the GPS, you're never gonna get good vertical or even horizontal in such a dense foliage, like the signals just blocked from above. So they went in there with the prism pole and had the actual total station on the outside shooting the laser in. And so these points are very accurate, these GCPs inside the forest floor. We're in the middle of the woods here. Right? Look at all those trees. That's where that, that's where that shot is at. And honestly, these are on these, uh, these nails that they, they put in the ground and th these things are buried and, you know, for all you know, that prison pole sunk into the dirt a little bit or it's on top of a little leaf or, you know, there's so much variance when you get inside of, you know, thick, dense vegetation like this. So that's why I think this accuracy report is pretty amazing. And you can just come in here and look at how you know spot on all these points are like for real this is in the middle of the woods and that's right on the surface so this looks beautiful um and the accuracy port let's flip back over to that looks great now here's some things that you can do to increase the accuracy not increase it but you're actually just fixing the data set so you have this mean uh delta in elevation so kind of what you want to do is reduce the mean to be as close to zero as possible so if I were to come back, if the mean was huge, like 0.1 or 0.5, basically the data set is gonna be really high, really low. You can actually move the data set again and it'll regenerate the accuracy report and the surface and everything in order to minimize that mean to as close to zero. And then that, the residual of the errors will be your RMS. So that's kind of what you wanna do once you've ordered surveyor. You want to come come in here make sure your mean is as close to zero as much as you can do as possible by moving it up and down and then what's left is the actual error in the data set uh, with respect to those gcps if you have bad gcps uh, so rtk surveying if the baseline's really far from the the base and rover those gcps can be a few centimeters off so if we're talking about the accuracy of the ladder data is within a couple centimeters well then you know, you gotta look at how you're getting GCPs in order to make that assessment. That's up to you. Um, we can also see all the individual points and we can see the Delta Z from each one inside of this data set. So that is awesome. Okay, so that is the deliverables. So anything else we wanna see here? I'm gonna come back over here, uh, turn the points all off. We can just see the surface model. We can go ahead and bring this over to balanced, smooth. Now, where do you get access all of these data? We can export the contours here and we can get that DEM TIFF right there as well over here in the deliverables. And that's what you can download, bring that into Civil 3D um, or TBC, Trimble Business Center, whatever you'd like to use. It's all available there. You can now export more. Let's see, there we go. So you got. Now we have Rock Surveyor Vectors, Rock Surveyor Grid, Rock Surveyor 10. This is where you can export these files as well. Um, and then everything else is in the deliverables that's pre-populated there. Okay. So that is running through A to Z of Rock Surveyor on the Rock Cloud. I hope you guys learned a lot. I definitely rambled a lot. Uh, I'm gonna make some more videos. I'm gonna go over specific tools inside the tools uh, menu over here, like the stockpile volumetrics. Uh, and I think that should give you a really good understanding of how to do this right. Um, again, oh, so a couple more things. You can add more points. So if you're a surveyor and you want those break lines, if you added points in there that are, have the feature codes on there, you know, top of curb, back of curb, et cetera, um, those will be included in the surface model that's generated from your uh, rock surveyor order, which if you click break lines. So you can always add more points and we will incorporate that into the surface model. So that's all there as well.
All right, guys, so here we are into a project that has a beautiful stockpile in it. I've already have a volumetric calculated here just to show you what our end result is going to look like today. But let's go into set, seeing how we do this. So I'm gonna come over here to this other mound. I'm going to click on the second icon here on the right hand side, the stockpile analysis. And let's just go ahead and, first of all, which one is this one? That's stockpile two. I'm gonna just remove that. Let's add a new one. And we can just click around the perimeter here. Double click, right click to come out. All right. And then if I hold shift and click, that'll add a point in between that bisects those. So I can hold shift. Let's do that again, hold shift and click. Adds two more, boom, boom. Hold shift and click. Look at that, so we can get real fine in there if we want. Once we've done that, let's bring that in. Just wanna get the base of this. Once we feel satisfied with our, our perimeter that we have captured there of the stockpile we wanna catch, capture the volume of, I feel good at that. Let's do a, we can select what the base surface is. Either it's the best fit of all these points I've drawn. So it's the best fit in the vertical of the surface, the flat plane, or it's gonna be the lowest one minimum, or it's gonna be the highest one maximum. So let's do best fit. It actually does a 10 model, best fit. Not a flat plane, it'll do a 10 of all those points. Uh, we can limit the classification. This is not classified, but if it was, uh, say you had some trees that are overhanging and this was getting captioned there. Well, you can just classify the ground as ground and then only use ground. See what I'm saying? Uh, it's an easy way to clean it up. We can do the accuracy um, as much as we want or as little and just click calculate. And there you go. That is a 3D surface, a volume. You can see the surface there at the bottom of that and the stockpile. And here we have the elevation max, min, perimeter, the 2D, 3D perimeter value, as well as the area. And the most important thing we wanna see is that cut and that fill and the difference between the two. So that is how you do a stockpile volumetric in the Rock Cloud. It's really fast, really easy. You can save this and you can share it with anyone and they'll see those numbers as well. Okay, so here I have the orthomosaic planimetrics. So there's two ways of ordering planimetrics. You can either do it on your 3D planimetrics with a point cloud or on a 2D planimetrics, just an orthomosaic. You can both access the Rock professional services and get those planimetrics done by the Rock team uh, with either of those data sets as, as an input. Uh, for all those you don't know, planimetrics, these are like 2D vectorization of features in uh, the real world. And these are necessary because we're gonna take these features and bring them into our CAD software. That's gonna help us to do design work. Uh, essentially, we gotta think about anything that we build in the real world needs to integrate with things that are already there. So if you have a sidewalk, if you have a, a, a easement or a road that comes in uh, to your parking lot, well, those public infrastructure or that sidewalk or the existing infrastructure needs to match up perfectly with what we're going to design and we're gonna build. So a big thing that we do with LiDAR data is we capture the real world, we make a digital twin of it, and we digitize that, and then we extract those features from that 3D data, and then we use that inside of our design software to then make the design for the new construction that we're going to build. Uh, you know, we have Alta surveys um, that require a lot of this features and line work, and you can get all this done on the Rock Cloud and automate that and kind of alleviate that stress from your team of going out there and just drawing a bunch of parking lot lines. Like you don't, you don't really need to do all those lines um, that <laughs> you need to find. So this one's on a uh, ortho mosaic, but we can also look at a 3D LiDAR data set and have 3D line work done as well. So on the Rock Cloud, uh, the way the line work is calculated and done, how we charge by it, is we charge by the area that you need processed. So you can see this yellow perimeter here. This is just using the measurements and using this area, creating an area there. And then you can actually see, you can select this as an enhanced processing area. So if you draw an area and then you select that, when you go to check out in the process button down here in the bottom left, 
and order planometrics, you're going to be able to, it, it will all automatically use the enhanced area you've selected. Um, so you're not gonna pay for all these acres over here and we're also not going to do planometrics over here. We'll only do them where you need them and not waste your time or money on places that you don't need them. Awesome guys. So if you wanna learn more about planometrics, please feel free to reach out to our team and we will gladly share with you what we do and how it can help your team do things a little bit faster and a little bit easier. All right guys, that's it on Rock Planometrics. I'll see you on the next one.